Hello, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back to the reading practice session. I hope all of you are doing good. Am I audible to all of you? Good evening, good evening. So let's begin with today's guest. And here I share my screen with you. We have the questions. You will be given time to solve them. Please make sure that you are giving yourself a limited time and you are not waiting for me to come up and only then you post your answers. You have to make sure that once you have decided your answers, check them once and then just post them. You cannot keep thinking over them and keep changing them over and over again because this you are not going to get this time in the exam. So practice as if. Uh, this is the exam. This is the last practice that you are doing before the exam. Give yourself the same timing, the same situation, the same push. Only then you will be preparing from the exam's point of view. So time management is really very important. So make sure you are not over timing. Here is your first question on the screen. And you have two and a half minutes to post your answers. Make sure to time yourself and post your answers.
Okay, should be done. Let's check the answer. The first one says Mount Vesuvius, a volcano located at the ancient Italian cities of this and this. So something between two things. Whenever we have two nouns, we will always go with between. And that's correct by, with all of you. You cannot say a mount, um, sorry, a volcano is located on the city or in the two cities. Volcano can be in one city, cannot be in two cities. So it has to be between two cities. Um, has received much attention because of its frequent and destructive eruptions. The most famous of these eruptions occurred in this time. The volcano had been dashed for centuries. The volcano had been what for centuries, idle, shipless, inactive or engaged. This was very easy because we don't use idle, shipless or engaged kind of words for volcanoes. But volcanoes are classified as active, dormant and inactive. So these are the three types of volcanoes that we have and there's only one suitable word here so we'll go with inactive don't post when there is explanation going on post your answers before that there was little warning of the coming eruption although one account unearthed by archaeologists says that a hard rain and a strong wind dashed the celestial calm during the preceding night so there were good hints that which tense we have to go in in this particular blank Something that happened the preceding night means the last night. So it has to be past tense. That is the first thing you should be noting down. So anything which is present tense should be eliminated. Now we have had disturbed, was disturbing or was being disturbed. This is simply based on active and passive. So the next thing we have to check is do we need active voice or we need passive voice. So who has disturbed? So the answer is the rain and wind had disturbed the calmness of the volcano so whenever the doer is given before the blank that is active voice and in active voice we always go with has have or had depending on the tense that we need so this is the right way of finding your answer when you have options in words word has have so if you have got your answer right but you have got it in some other way please note down this way that this is how you have to think first of all present or past tense Second, active or passive voice. That is why the concept clearance of active and passive is very, very important because if you don't know the concept, you will always be just guessing, right? So when the doer is given before the blank, means the person who has done the work, the thing that has done the work is given before the blank, then it is active voice and you have to go with has, have, had. Early the next morning, the volcano poured a huge river of molten rock down upon this name completely burying the city and filling the harbor with lava dash on the other side of the mountain cinders stone and ash rained down on Pompeii. so this is these are two paragraphs you always have to look at that why uh, there are different paragraphs they are there for a reason it's not that they just don't feel like writing ahead so they change the paragraph so there are two paragraphs that means there are two different stories or at least there's a shift in the story so you have to keep these things in mind when you're looking when you're reading the next sentences so they explained what happened and now they're explaining what happened on the other side of the mountain so for example this was the mountain they explained one side and now they're explaining the other side dash on the other side of the mountain can we say meantime? Meantime is not a connector. We use meantime with in the meantime, not meantime alone. Also, when same thing happens, then you go with also. Meanwhile, when something is happening at one side and at the same time, what is happening on the other side, that is when we use a connector meanwhile. Hence is used when we give the conclusion of something. So here, this is not the conclusion because it's a different story starting. So we'll go with meanwhile because this is explaining when this was happening at one side, what was happening at the other side. That is meanwhile on the other side of the mountain, this was happening. Sparks from the burning ash ignited the combustible roofs quickly. Large portions of the city were destroyed in the conflagration. However, fire was not the only cause of dash. Poisonous sulfuric gases saturated the air. These heavy, heavy gases were not buoyant in the atmosphere and therefore sank towards the earth and suffocated people. Do you think damage is enough to explain this much severity? 
some of you have written fire was not only cause of damage is this just damage people are suffocating there is molten lava every side there are sulfuric acid which are coming towards the earth there is fire already are is this just damage so sometimes you have to get your answer based on the writing style how severe is the topic what are they trying to convey by writing these extra two sentences even after the blank they could have finished the paragraph the context at the blank only why have they given you extra two sentences so keep this thing in your mind that there is not a single word which will be given without any purpose there if there is a sentence two sentences three sentences which don't have a blank they are still there for a reason so every single word that they write is to give you a hint of something or the other so you have to read from the analyzation point of view that you should be very very vigilant on what you are reading why are they saying this thing because these are also the reasons for selecting the answers right so whenever something is like a volcano something which have two options you have to go with between two things and the words that we can use for volcanoes are active inactive and dormant if you want you can note them down the third one you first have to look at whether i need a um present tense or past tense because you have options in present and past both so something that happened previous night should always be past tense so you first eliminate the present tense option and then your option are uh, the difference between had and was is based on active and passive because this is an active statement the doer is given before the blank we will go with had disturbed rain had disturbed wind had disturbed the calmness of the volcano this makes sense you cannot say rain and wind was disturbed first of all for rain and wind you need were you don't need singular tense so even was disturbing and was being disturbed cannot be the answer in any way if you don't even look at active and passive because there are two things and you need were for that not was right and the fourth one hence is used for conclusion also is when you keep saying the same thing meantime is not used as a connector it is used in the meantime but meanwhile also means the same in the meantime is the same way we write uh, same reason same purpose that we use meanwhile when we want to say when this was happening at the same time what was happening on the other side and the last one the severity tells us that this is not just loss or damage this is destruction because people are dying at a large scale huge mass population is suffering they cannot breathe this is destruction on the planet right dormant d o r m a n t yes so breathe right just a small request when i start the explanation please don't type anything in the chat box i hope it's clear to everyone now any confusions anyone okay so here you have question number 2 2 1/2 minutes and then post your answers
file should be done. Okay, so the first sentence says nature writing is non fiction or fiction prose or poetry about the natural environment. So we have been given the definition of nature writing so as to understand what are we going to talk about. So we are going to talk about a form of writing which is about writing about the natural environment. It can be in the form of fiction prose or it can be a poetry about natural environment. It can be non fiction as well. But this uh, lets, us, lets, lets us understand that what is the topic about. Then they are further saying nature writing Nash a wide variety of works ranging from those that place primary emphasis on natural history facts to those in which philosophical interpretations uh, predominate. It includes natural history essays, poetry, essays of solitude or escape as well as travel. And so this sentence was easy to understand that what this, these things actually mean. So, if we look at grammar here, nature writing is singular. We need a verb with s because it's a factual statement. We don't. We, this is not a tense-based statement, so we don't need present, past, or future kind of thing. So, anything which is not present tense should be eliminated. Sorry, the first one, which is consisted. Then, nature writing is singular, so we need a verb with s. Contain is without s, so that should be eliminated. Now we have two options. Nature writing encompasses or nature writing creates. We cannot say nature writing creates these things because create is used for when someone is making the effort to uh, reach the end product. That should be the creation. Now essays, poetry can be the creation but these are the creations of some writers. We cannot say nature writing creates these things because writing itself means essay or poetry something. So we should go with nature writing includes, encompasses it, all these categories come into nature writing. So nature writing includes a wide variety of works because the writing style was just to say that all of these things are included in the term nature writing. Nature writing often dash heavily on scientific information and facts about the natural world. So often is an adverb, you can eliminate that to find out your answer. Nature writing dash heavily on. Again, nature writing is singular, so we need a verb with S. So anything which is past tense should be eliminated because we are not talking about any time period here. Now we have relates, associates and draws. This was simple based on preposition based blank. Relates come with to, associates come with with and draw come with on. So you just had to check the preposition. And then you can find out your answer. Because we have on written here, so we'll give it, we'll go with draws on. If we will have with, we would have gone with associates. If you have two, then you can go with relates. These kind of blanks also come in the exam one to two easily. Preposition check, this is called. Nature writing draws on scientific information and facts about the natural world at the same time. It is written in the first person and incorporates personal observations. So the sentence is absolutely complete. It is written in the first person and written is a verb. So we need adverb here. First of all, let's go over grammar thing. How many adverbs do we have? Regularly, frequently, routinely. Repeated is not an adverb, so that cannot be the answer. Now, regularly and routinely mostly means the same. How do we use this word? I brush my teeth regularly. I go for a walk on a routinely basis. So regularly and routinely are the two words which we use for something that is done every day. That is when we use regularly and routinely. But we cannot say that uh, nature writing is every day written in the first course. Right? So we have to go with frequently. Frequently means mostly it is written in the first person and incorporates personal observations of and philosophical reflections dash nature. Again, this was a check of collocation. Reflections of, reflection, reflection upon, reflection with or reflection against. The word reflect or any form of reflect. Reflect, reflects, reflecting, reflections always go with upon. You might have uh, in the um, universities or college assessments, it is very common. Reflect upon your experience. Or reflect upon your understanding of this concept. So it is very commonly used in the assessment work that we are given in college or universities. 
otherwise you can make a note reflect any form of reflect word always comes with the preposition on modern nature writing traces its dash to the works of natural history that were popular in the second half of the 18th century and throughout the 19th the word traces always comes with roots this is a common collocation trace back that's one thing it also comes with trace back its roots roots were traced back roots can be traced back so these are the common words which go together roots trace back in any form and they're generally um, referred with the word to and after that it is given a past time period so all of the things fit so you have to go with traces its roots back in the history and back in the history can be given in any form but it has to be past tense always past time period rather not just past tense it has to be a past time period right so I'll repeat, nature writing includes a wide variety, includes means encompasses in a better form. Nature, this is a factual statement, so we have to go with present tense. Nature writing is singular, so we have to go with the verb with S, right? So these were all the checks that you had to perform. The second one, the same checks, but this was additionally, we have to check the preposition. So associates plus with, relates plus to, draws plus on. Focused also comes with on, but we don't need past tense here because this is again a factual statement. The third one, we needed an adverb and adverbs routinely and regularly are used for everyday things. So everyday doesn't fit here. So we'll go with frequently means most of the times. The fourth one was again a collocation check. The word reflect, any form of reflect always comes with the preposition on. And the last one, common combinations, trace, back, roots to the past time period. This is also a very common blank that comes. <coughs> right? Any other confusion, anybody? So in the first one, Kusum, we have to check present and past tense. And also we have to check that uh, what is the meaning. We cannot go with nature writing creates a wide variety of work. Nature writing doesn't create. The person creates whosoever writes. So it has to be nature writing includes, which is encompasses. So things to be noted down in this, facts are always written in present tense. You have to check with S or without S depending upon the noun that you have. The subject is singular or plural. Based on that, you will select your verb, whether you need with S verb or without S. But in any case, um, facts cannot be written in future or past tense. They always come in simple present tense. This is a common um, rule and you get blanks based on this rule in the exam. Right? Question number three, two and a half minutes and then post your answers.
one of the questions in which I feel we really don't need the options because they were too obvious. So even if you read the sentences, you can get the answers. The continued growth of world population is putting increased dash on natural resources. This is a very common um, sentence that we keep on hearing every single day. So we have a lot of pressure on the natural resources because there is increased demand, the population is increasing and it is putting a pressure on land, it is putting a pressure on natural resources, common word. So continued growth of world population is obviously a negative thing. So we cannot go with it is putting necessity. Moreover, we don't put necessity, we don't put compulsion and we don't put force on natural resources. Can you put force on water? Can you put, put force on air? But if we are putting a pressure on the natural resources. This has led to soil erosion, deforestation, contamination of seawater with agricultural runoff. These problems are exacerbated by globalization as countries become even more dashed on one another for resources. So countries are becoming dependent. Dependent comes with on. For a few things, we cannot say countries are becoming incapable on each other. Incapable is not something countries can become on each other. Can we say Australia has become incapable on India? Doesn't make sense. Australia has become reliable on India. Again, conditional. They are becoming dependent to get resources from each other. There are many advantages that dash from globalization. So advantages is plural. We need a verb without S. Many advantages that result from make sense. Advantages don't happen. Happen and occur are the words that we use for something which happen or occur naturally, in which there is no planning involved. Like you say an accident happened or accident occurred, tsunami occurred, earthquake occurred. These are the things that happen and occur. And many advantages that existed, we don't need past tense. This is a factual statement. We have advantages from globalization. So this is a present thing. So we'll go with there are many advantages that come from globalization, come from, can be result from. A dash of new technologies and industries have been made possible by the interconnectivity created by globalization. So with all, we need a noun and it should be a singular noun. But when we read ahead, we come to know a dash of new technologies and industries. So we need a word which is singular, but which conveys plurality. And what we have array cannot come with A. We have to, we need an array. Scope cannot come. A scope of new technologies and industries have been made possible by globalization. Globalization has already happened. It's not just the scope. But we can go with range of. Range of means a lot of, a number of. So a range of new technologies and industries have been made possible by globalization because now if you need, um, Australia needs some uh, resources, they can easily get from the other country. That's because of globalization. So we have a range of technologies available. Dash this, other problems that result from globalization also need to be taken into account. Despite this, Yes, despite comes with when you have only the noun or pronoun written after. There's no verb and this is a pronoun. Instead comes alone. We don't say instead with this. Instead this. Moreover, instead comes with substitution. Like you say, instead of one thing. Instead tea, I prefer coffee. Substitution. After this, this is not a chronology going on. After this means when you're going step by step. First this, then this, after this. And apart comes with apart from this. Apart cannot say apart this. That's incomplete. So we have to go with despite this. Because the sentence is going opposite now. The previous sentence was talking about advantages. And this one is talking about disadvantages. The problems. That is why we are changing the stance. We are saying despite this. Means despite the advantages. Other problems that result from globalization. They also need to be taken into account. So this fight always comes when you try to connect to opposite pieces of information. And this here is referring to advantages. So that is why we have to go with this fight. Last time you said after that plural verb will come. There is no rule that after that singular or plural will come. Verb, the decision of verb is always on the basis of noun, not on the basis of this that we use. So you have to check your noun based on which you have to select the verb. 
so these are the answers the first one is the population is putting a pressure on the natural resources second one countries are depending on each other for technologies the third one advantages is plural so we need a verb without s so we'll say advantages that result from even if it was given here that's why i underlined problems that result from so advantages that result from a dash of new technologies and industries so a comes with a noun it should be singular but convey something which can match the plural words given after so we'll say a range of because range of means a number of despite because now you are going contrast you are saying despite the advantages other problems also take need to be taken into account so advantages and problems are opposite so that is why we we'll go with despite there are two rules that we use despite with rajmi despite comes with ing uh, form of verbs plus despite comes with when you have only a noun not a verb so go through the videos once again if you haven't or even if you have you need to revise them again any other confusions in this question anybody So we have question number four here. Two and a half minutes to post your answers for this one.
All right, should be completed. The says the Highlanders still followed the clan system, which dashed in place for hundreds of years. So when we read ahead, we come to know this whole stories of past tense. We are talking about the past story. Even the first part of the sentence, they say the Highlanders with H capital means obviously would be type of people still followed the clan system. And Miss Shrikha, you have written, will be in place. If you don't have the clan system, what were they following? What have they already followed? So, will be means this is yet to come. Right? Word comes with plural noun. But you have the clan system, which is singular. So, you can say the clan system, which was in place. You cannot say which were in place for one system. And here, if we say which was being in place, so being always goes with when you want to say ing form in passive sense, passive tense. But this is not about ing. We'll go with had been because they are numbers of years. Means we want to say been always shows continuity. And we needed continuity because we are talking about hundreds of years. So something that was there for hundreds of years have to be showed with continuity. Had Past tense, been means continuously there. The clan was ruled by one family. From dash, its chief was drawn. Here also some of you have written from whom. Many of you have written from whom. How do we use whom? She is my friend from whom I borrowed the dress. So from whom means from this person you borrowed a dress. That person is the source of your dress. She is the teacher from whom I learned French. So one teacher from whom, from that person, you learned something. Here, the noun is one family. And you are saying one family and you used to get one person out of the family as a chief. The whole family cannot be the chief. Its chief means chief of the whole clan. That will be only one person. So when you want to say out of, then we go with which. The clan was ruled by one family from which, from means from which means out of which. So from that whole family of 10, 15 people, one person was taken out as the chief. So that is from which. The kinsfolk and others who dashed the clan lived together in agricultural townships. So again, the past story. So present tense cannot come, form is not possible. Can we say the people who completed the clan? People who prepared or people who made up. Because clan means the group. Made up means the group was made of these people. So we have to go with made up. People who made up that group, they used to live together in agricultural townships. Because prepared is when you prepare a third person thing, a third thing. So here we want to talk about those people only. People who made up the clan. They used to live together. The land was controlled by the chief, but leased from him by taxmen who rented it to tenant farmers, who in turn employed potters to help cultivate it. Tinged with feudal influences, the clan was also very much a marital system grounded on the dash of its fighting men to provide military service for the chief to whom they owed personal allegiance. So the clan was kind of a marital, sorry, martial system. Grounded on the dash of. So after the and before of, we need a noun. So this group was formed on martial system grounded on the assignment. So men are fighting to provide military service to the chief. Is this an assignment, obligation, burden, or charge? So we'll go with obligation means this was their duty. They had to do that. Because if you have a person as the chief, you have to serve the chief. So it was a martial system. Martial also represents kind of army grounded on the obligation of its fighting men to provide military service for the chief. They have to do that. Those fighting men were partly dependent on plunder gained from raiding neighboring clans to dash their standard of living. So even if let's say we don't know the meaning of plunder, let's try to understand the sentence. The men who are fighting, they are dependent on something which they get from neighboring clans. So plunder can be kind of any food, money, anything that they are getting to dash their standard of living. 
so we do comes first form of work to continue the standard of living to pursue pursue is like i am pursuing math masters of teaching so pursue is what are you studying what are you following but for standard of living we have to go with maintain because everybody wants to maintain what their standard of living is right we don't follow standard of living we don't continue standard of living because it's not a work but we want to maintain our standard so it should be maintain their standard of living so these are the answers the first one it is past tense so you have to go with which had been be been always shows continuity had shows past tense so past tense plus continuous was were the things that you needed for the first blank second one the clan means group of people and you want to take one person out of the group so you have to say from which from which means out of this whole family you have to take one person out whereas from whom whom is when you refer to one person so which is out of the third one these are the people who made up the clan so the people who made up the clan means the people from whom the group was made so if there are 10 students in the class we can say the students who made up class a means all these students are class a that is the people who made up the clan they used to live together in townships the fourth one martial system military service tells you that this is about fighting even fighting word is there so the clan was based on this system and what was the system grounded on the obligation means was their duty to serve their chief to provide military service for the chief and the last one the men who used to fight they were dependent on something which they used to get from neighboring clans and for what to maintain the standard of living <laughs> that in which the the easiest difference is when you have that you don't put a comma before that and when you have which you put a comma before you use the word which otherwise both of them are used for reference but the writing style varies section each only comes with singular nouns manisha each cannot come with the family members each can come with each family member only each is a singular um, noun each comes with singular noun now pursue is an academic word but you cannot say pursue you do you pursue standard of living pursue is follow like you pursue education i am pursuing my career in aeronautics that is pursue I didn't say pursue is not an academic word, but pursue doesn't fit with standard of living. Right. The fifth one and the last one for reading writing blanks, no problem. Two and a half minutes and post your answers.
different ways of understanding the passage one is just looking at what information is given after long absence hallucinogens began to dash in scientific research in the late 1990s if you don't know the meaning of this when you read ahead you come to know they are talking about medical uses they are using patients symptoms means this can be a name of a drug medicine that was one way of understanding the second phrase a similar sentence after a long absence we understand the meaning of after long absence <laughs> mr a began to dash in the class what can you put here after a long absence mr a began to repeat in the class is it possible mr a began to come out in the class mr a began to reveal in the class what does reveal have to do with absence so these are the ways you have to analyze the text before you are just guessing this or that can be the answer so it simply wanted to say that after long absence something began to come again because absence means it was not there for a period of time and now it has come up again so again means it has to be re something so redo doing it again reappear coming again appearing again right so this is the way to understand the sentences if there is any time a word which is bit high in vocabulary they will always give you another other hints that you can still find your answer and you don't have to depend upon vocab only so you have to understand this thing and read accordingly the new studies which have investigated the therapeutic applications of hallucinogens hallucinogens for a variety of conditions have been conducted with greater methodological rigor and attention to patient safety than their predecessors in the 1960s most of the studies have been small since these drugs are still tightly controlled and the us government does not recognize any dash medical uses so they are tightly controlled the government does not recognize any medical uses what kind of medical uses the government has to recognize approved but approved the government has to approve it the government does not recognize means the government does not feel there are any medical uses so what kind of medical uses it should be legitimate the government does not recognize any legal use legitimate means legal use the government does not think it has any legal use it should be uh, given any legal use and dash does not offer any funding for research so this and is connecting two pieces of information which are different from each other the first part and the second part we have to understand what is the relationship between them so the government does not recognize any legal medical use of this particular drug that there is no legal use and thus we will not give the funding because it is not legal to use this drug so why should we give the funding the government will think like this valid or invalid how do we use the word valid rajni <clears throat> valid and invalid has nothing to do with law so um, if you don't let's say if you <laughs> breach a traffic rule then there's a law which applies there you have to pay the penalty you have to pay the fine or anything which is anything which is unlawful there is a law behind that that's why that's when it is categorized as lawful or doing this is unlawful in the country it's not valid if you cross the red light it's not valid or invalid things so the government does not recognize there is no legal use of this particular drug and thus means because of this you conclude and that is why we will not give any funding for its research but researchers have generally characterized their initial results as very dash now but tells us we are going to go opposite the previous sentence said the government will not give any funding means the government does not give any funding but means we have to go positive now because the previous sentence was negative so researchers have categorized that the results that they have got are very dash are very good we need a positive word here hopeful promising results are favorable or likely so this is a collocation promising results are the word <laughs> words which go together so promising results means results which show a good hope about 
at thing in the future that if we do more research if we experiment more if we get more funds we can get something really good out of this so that is a promising result the next one says for example studies on patients with terminal illnesses found that the mystical experiences induced by this produce stronger and longer lasting dash in patients symptoms do you want the symptoms to grow do we want the symptoms to develop or do we want the symptoms to improve very easy was the answer we never want the symptoms to grow because it's a good thing for symptoms to grow to develop advance means to increase but we will want the symptoms to improve the symptoms to become better because we don't want symptoms the symptoms is not a good thing that we want them to grow and prosper right so it has to be we want improvement in the symptoms so these are the answers the first one the drugs they used to come again in the scientific research to so come again means reappear because they were absent for a period of time the second one the government does not recognize any legal use and thus they are not ready to pay any fund for the research this was context based but understandable language next one but the results are very promising we are not getting the research or research funds but the results that we have got they are very promising so promising results is a combination it's a collocation you can note it down and the last one because symptoms are not good symptoms is not a good thing so we don't want them to grow and develop we want them to improve we can put thus and therefore without commas if we are using them in a running sentence good suganya very well done we put a comma after uh, thus and therefore when we start a new sentence from thus and therefore using them in a running sentence you don't need a comma before thus can be used when you want to say in this way if you have a way explain gen mostly it is used in the way you know in this way that thus is used in place of in this way but in very rare of the cases if you don't have therefore given then you can also go with thus when you want to relate it to that because of the previous scenario thus this was the conclusion right okay we are starting with reorders the first reorder 2 minutes for this and then post your answers
very bad answer. Who is this? Subanya. Well done. I could see the only one right. The clearances. Which clearances? Those who have written D as the first sentence, please go and do your strategy class for reading again, especially for the reorder part. You didn't even look at this word, for instance. Whenever there is a connector between two commas, you always have to read it in the beginning of the sentence. This is for example, and this is the example given. Can example be the first sentence in the orders? We will follow those same things we have been sticking with that where we have the name of the person that will come the first sentence. Come out of your methods and ways of solving. Those are wrong, to be very honest. So those things that you have crammed, they are not going to help you in reading. You have to change them. So the clearances, which clearances? The Highland clearances. So this is the name. That is why C comes first and then comes A. You are talking about the same thing. And then you have his. So we have to go with the name of the person first and then only we can go with his. I really don't know what is the story. Yes, I have read the sentences. I read each and every word. But I read just to mark. Okay, this sentence is talking about the clearances are this, this, this. Advice that his interior. So what is his? I have to find the name of a person. And here uh, I had came known as the Highland Clearances. I read about clearances earlier also. So this is clearances. This is Highland Clearances. Means this has to come first. This is an example and this has the name of the person. This is how you have to solve reorders. Please change your methods. Please don't you keep following those things that don't know where you have come up with. This should have been a full mark question. Well done, Subhanya. The second one, two minutes and then post your answers.
So most of you have written B as your first sentence. So B says over the past seventeen years, successive eruptions have flooded lava over wide stretches of all these places across the hotspot. Which hotspot? Which hotspot is this? You have sentences where you have the names of the hotspots. Then how can you say the hotspot? And after that, you give the name of the hotspot. The first sentence was C, which is the most general statement given here. The Yellowstone Caldera, also known as the Yellowstone Super Volcano, is a volcano active, volcanically active region in Yellowstone National Park. This was your topic. You give the name of the volcano and you say that it's a super volcano. It's a volcanically active region in the Yellowstone National Park. And then you give the further introduction. It measures because kilometers by kilometers can be the region only. Volcano cannot be kilometers by kilometers. A region, a piece of land can be this by this. And then after that, you have uh, the Yellowstone hotspot. This is the name of the hotspot. But where does it come from? This comes from D. Yellowstone is believed to lie on top of one of the planet's few dozen hotspots, where light, hot, molten metal rock rises above towards the surface. So there are few hotspots means more than one. So out of all of them. The Yellowstone hotspot has a long history, and history is what was being explained here. Seventeen million years in the past is the history being explained about the hotspot. The hotspot is which hotspot? The Yellowstone hotspot. So read the sentences very, very carefully. You have to think on what is broader, what is narrower. Few hotspots will always come before one hotspot, and name of hotspot will come before saying the hotspot. Right? So these are the basic rules. You first get the broadest, then the narrower, 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 and the narrowest at the end. <clears throat> the third and the last question for the orders, and then we will move on to plan. Two minutes and then post your answers.
good victor well done anu well done shivam good attempt so the first sentence was where we have the introduction that what is vesta this is an asteroid the asteroid vesta is the second largest asteroid in our solar system and then the second one was v with a diameter of about 330 miles it orbits so it means vesta orbits the sun between the planets mars and jupiter why because then we are left with two sentences and both of them are talking about crust mantle core this is also about crust mantle core so we cannot put two in between which has nothing to do with crust mantle core so the c sentence says because vesta has a crust who told you vesta has a crust so you cannot say because of something which you don't know about so first you have to say that vesta is composed of rock in its crust and man mantle and it has an iron core first you tell that it has crust mantle core and then you can give information that because it has crust mantle core it is considered a planet as small right so you cannot use information which you haven't talked about so that is why you first have to go with a and tell that it has crust mantle core made of this 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 and because it has crust mantle core it is called planet as small right so i felt the reorders were quite easy today you get this level in the exam so you have to be more cautious when you are solving them <coughs> let's move on to reading blanks you have 2 minutes to solve the first one and then post your answers please
All right, let's discuss. Please post if anybody is left. So this says the World Health Organization is responsible for dash a pandemic. After form comes ing form of verb, and we have two options: WHO creating a pandemic or WHO declaring. So nobody creates a pandemic. Especially World Health Organization will never create a pandemic. But yes, they are responsible for declaring. WHO monitors disease activity on a global scale. Dash a network of centers located in countries worldwide. So WHO monitors the activity. How do they monitor? This is their method of monitoring. This is their way. This is their process of monitoring. And whenever we have a way, method, or process, then we always go with through. This is what we have noted down in the last two days as well. So monitors the activity. How do they monitor through a network of centers located in countries worldwide? And has a pandemic preparedness plan that consists of six phases of pandemic alert. Phase one represents the lowest level of alert, and usually dash that a newly emerged or previously distinct virus is circulating. So they have used first form of verb. We will also go with first form of verb. So phase one represents the lowest level of alert. Phase one dash that a newly emerged virus is circulating. So verb with s we have shows and indicates. So phase one is not a picture that can show us something, but it can indicate us, give us the signs that a newly existing virus is circulating. Dash animals. So animals is plural, and before plural we can go with <coughs> among animals. That sorry with low risk of transmission to humans. Phase six is declared when an outbreak is characterized by globally dash and sustained disease transmission among humans. Past form of verb we will also go with past form of verb. So they uh, phase six is declared when an outbreak is characterized by dash and sustained disease transmission. So what we have is widespread and common. So this is not something common. Globally comes with widespread. Widespread is past form is also widespread, so we can go with widespread. Globally widespread means it is it has spread throughout in the globe. Everywhere in the globe is known as widespread. Globally widespread. Right. So these are the answers. The first one with four comes ing form, and WHO cannot be responsible for creating, but yes, they declare. So we go with declaring a pandemic. The second one, the answer is how. So whenever you have a way, process, or method, it always comes with through this way, through this method, through this um, process. The third one we need first form of verb with s, and phase one is the indication. It indicates. The fourth one among comes with plural, and that was the only option we have to go with plural animals. And the last one globally widespread is spread all over in the globe. The meaning of outbreak. Where were you in the Corona times? Outbreak is when a disease is widely spread throughout the globe. That is outbreak when it affects masses at a large. At the same time, that is called outbreak of a disease. <laughs> right. Question number two on your screens. Two minutes to solve this, and then post your answers, please.
All right, let's discuss. Good question. It's easy enough to agree that human beings all around the world have certain basic requirements that must be that in order to ensure their survival, in order to ensure their well-being. Why am I assuming words? So B comes with third form of verb, and this was right for all of you because requirements have to be fulfilled. They also use this thing, uh, fulfill these requirements. So it was somewhat given in the question. So we have a connector between two commas. So we will read it in the beginning of the sentence. However, history has shown us that it's not so easy to form societies or communities that fulfill these requirements for all members. The fight over human and civil rights has dashed for hundreds of years and remains alive today. So it has come third form of verb, has remained and has persisted. Persisted is the answer because persisted persisted means continued. Remained means something which has remained as it is. But the answer is continue because we, we are saying for number of years. So that is continue. For all these years, these problems were continuing, continuing, continuing. So that's why we'll go with they have persisted for hundreds of years and remains alive today. Both dash the borders of the nations and on an international scale. So both inside and outside the border, basically, they want to say inside the border will be within the borders and international scale means outside the borders. It has led to large scale social dash and reforms. So they have used a plural noun. We should also go with the plural noun. What do we have? We have only one, which is movements. So no choice. Movements and reforms concerning issues such as this and that. So some of you have done the persisted one wrong. You have uh, said remain. Remain is when something remains the same as it is. But we want to match it with timeline, hundreds of years. So we want to say something that has continued all the years, not remains. <laughs> that is not a reason for um, not selecting remains that it is always already there in the sentence. That's never a reason to select or not select a word that it is there or it is not there. It doesn't matter. You have to look at your own grammar, what grammar that, that particular answer has to be in and what meaning, what context it has to be in. Third one, accomplish. Accomplish is to fulfill something. So what did I explain? Both inside the border and outside. Because the way they have written both dash the border and on international scale. So what do they want to write? Inside and outside the border. Inside has nothing to do with accomplished Rajni. So inside means within the country and outside the country. Outside means international. Third one, two minutes and then post your answers.
good well attempted the first one is social media comprises of because what else we have we have includes but includes does not come with of we say social media includes sites like facebook twitter instagram but without of so we have to go with comprises because with comprises we always need of the content can be anything from normal uplate to images and videos the negative effects of social media are seen in many ways most of which includes the dangers of social media dash and cyber bullying so the danger of social media what because social media is not itself a danger but social media addiction is the danger even the next sentence explains you so that is why we have to introduce the term social media addiction the next sentence says social media addiction is defined as spending time on social media so how much time is addiction so when you spend more than required time <clears throat> so more than required means excessive time excessive means more than requirement So when we spend excessive time on social media or having an emotional dependence on social media, despite its dash, so its means of the social media. So despite its, so <clears throat> despite tells us we have to go opposite. So we have emotional dependence on social media, which is kind of a positive thing. We are emotionally dependent on something, despite its consequences, despite the negative impacts. Even after we know that we have negative effects. still we have um, emotional dependence on social media so that is the use of despite here consequences of spending too much time on social media sites are narcissism anxiety and depression the causes of these consequences are dash to both the social media site and the user's behavior so with r comes third form of verb and we have allocated and attributed so we did the meaning of attributed the other day attributed is because of and allocated is when you divide something like allocate the responsibilities means divide the responsibilities to the people it's kind of giving something and attributed to means when you give the reasons after to <laughs> the causes of these consequences are because of both the social media site and the users behavior so these are both the reasons both the causes so when we say because of we want to say attributed to means these are the reasons of the causes <coughs> so what is the meaning of outcomes in this one the causes of these consequences are outcomes to both social media what are the outcomes consequences itself are negative outcomes right so consequences means what negative results negative outcomes so why will we write outcomes again any confusion in this question anybody the last question for today number 4 you have 2 minutes and post your answers
good, very well done. This says the tactics dashed by each army on each occasion depend on such circumstances as weather, organization, and this and that. Before by, we need past form of verb, and let's see how many we have. Only one, no choice. So the tactics adopted by the army depend on various factors. Dash, while circumstances and purposes vary, the fundamental principles of tactics are eternal. So what we have is nevertheless and still. Still is used when something is started and is continuing, like the rain, it is still raining. So rain started and it is still presently continuing. That is when we do still. Here we'll go with nevertheless because we are trying to go opposite to the previous sentence and it depends upon various factors. But the circumstances and purposes can vary. But the fundamental principles are eternal. Eternal means they remain <clears throat> as they are. At bottom, they derive from the fact that in war, each the two forces, each of which is free to dash its independent will. So, with two comes first form of war. So, we are talking about forces in the war, means armies or two groups in the war. So, each of the group is free to dash its will. Exercise and use, two options. So, use is used with the physical things, like use the spoon, use the bottle, use, <laughs> use the laptop. Exercise also means use, but it is used with abstract things. Like exercise comes with power, exercise the power, because power is not something we can <clears throat> touch. It's, a, it's an abstract thing. The same way will is something which is abstract, so we use exercise in those cases. Meet in an attempt to destroy each other while attempting to avoid being destroyed. So this was easy based on the language that both the forces, both the groups, they toy try to destroy each other. At the same time, they are trying to avoid being destroyed, that they should not get destroyed, but they have to fight with the armed other group as well. Assuming the two sides should be approximately equal, a dash of both force and guy is required. So two things we can go with combination, because after a comes a noun, blending actually means mixing. So we cannot mix force and guy. It's not about that we should mix them. It's about we need both the things if we want to win. So we need force and <laughs> guy is necessary. Very good attempt. I think this is the best question that you all have done. The maximum correct answers have gone, come out here. Nevertheless means however. With while at the same time will come. <clears throat> yes. Because while means you're going opposite and at the same time means it's it's just a reference of time. So for example, you say that I'm trying to complete my homework while at the same time watching television. So while means opposite of something that you are doing at the same time means you are giving to the time reference that you are doing both the things at the same time. I don't know the meaning of guile. I didn't feel it's important. So I didn't pay attention to that. Use is used for physical things. Exercise is for abstract things. The examples can be exercise power, exercise discretion, exercise vigilance, exercise this will. So all these things are. Um, abstract. So we go with that. <coughs> All rounder meaning of guile is it? Sure. Anybody else? Any question? All good with all of you. <clears throat> okay. So these were all the questions that we had to do today. We do have a class tomorrow. Please do come back. Don't miss the class and keep practicing on your portals as many questions as you can. <clears throat>